All the stars have come in close Just to see you, I suppose And they're a-gleaming You must be dreaming And the sun has said goodbye With a twinkle in his eye He's left the ocean With sweet emotion We go dancing in the rain Riding on a midnight train Away so slowly And the moon is... Hello there and welcome to episode 39 of Little Big Knits. This is a podcast about knitting. My name is Selma and I'm coming to you from here in Ottawa, Canada, where I live with my family and our cat Yoda. You can find me as Selma Knits on uh, Ravelry and Instagram. And on Ravelry, we have a group where you can find the show notes, our knit alongs are there, and um, you can introduce yourself, you can join and join in the fun if you like. I want to say a little thing, a little thing about uh, about Ravelry because I know that Ravelry has been under fire uh, recently about some of the actions that it has taken. And I, and, and in case you don't know because you're not on Ravelry, um, they just they decided to redo their site and it was not accessible to uh, certain people with certain disabilities. It was caused some visual issues for people for some people and um, there's been a little bit of uh, controversy about the way Ravelry has handled the whole situation um, around accessibility and I have to say that I'm really torn about how I feel about this right now I'm waiting to see how they continue to react uh, they did not do a fabulous job in the beginning I think they admit it as well um, and so I'm just waiting to see, uh, you know, in what way they uh, move forward with this before I make any major decisions about Ravelry. Ravelry has been an extremely important part of this knitting community. In fact, I'm going to make a bold statement and say that because of Ravelry, we have this knitting community. So I, I really am not going to be quick to make big judgments about them because I think they have given an awful lot to this community and I think they have made um, strides for this community in many ways. Um, and I do hope that, uh, and, I, and I do trust that they are doing their best to try and respond to this. And uh, I personally don't like the look of the new Ravelry, I have to be honest, and, and I have converted to the old look because you can, you can do that for now. Um, I, I don't like the new logo, I didn't like the new look. <laughs> I I, uh, I prefer the old one to be honest and maybe that's just me being conservative or I just don't really like the R I prefer the ball of wool um, I don't I, I, I don't suffer I have had migraines in the past I don't tend to suffer from the visual uh, part of it um, so I can't say for other people what has happened but um, there was something about the new look that just didn't really jive with me, that's for sure. So anyway, for now, you can find us on Ravelry and, um, and I really do hope that, uh, that they're able to find uh, a way to accommodate everybody. And, but it is a huge site with millions of users on it. I'm not sure how many people they have on there now, but at one point I checked and I think they were around 8 million people. It is a huge site and a huge part of this community. So uh, I really do hope that they're able to find a positive way forward. So you can find us there, the Little Big Knits group on Ravelry uh, for any of the stuff that we're doing. And what are we doing? We've got two knit alongs going on right now. We've got the Garment Galore Cal, um, which is a year long knit along that goes until uh, the end of December. We've got tons of garments in there. It's all about sweaters and uh, anything that we would consider a garment, not an accessory. 
and there's just such inspiration in there. It's been absolutely delightful. And, um, and we also have our other knit along. And as, as I've always say, it includes crochet as well. I just call it a knit along just out of simplicity, but really it includes, um, it includes crochet as well. And the other one is called It's About Time. So that is a knit along about uh, things that you're making and it's about time that you're making them. Things like yarn or patterns that you've had in your stash for over a year or maybe they've been whips that have been languishing for a long time and it's about time that you get them done. It's about time that you knit that pattern that you bought in 2017 thinking you were going to do it right away. So, um, and that too has had uh, a lot of action. People are finishing up things. It's been great. So you can join us on Ravelry if you want to join in in either of those cows. You're absolutely welcome. Everybody is welcome to join us there. Thank you to the new subscribers who've joined us. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, we've got quite a few people who've joined over since my last episode, which was at the end of June. And um, hello to you all and feel free to come over and join us in the Ravelry group. And welcome to everybody who's been around for a while. Thank you for all the wonderful, wonderful birthday wishes that you gave me. I had a great birthday. It was really, really nice. Uh, we had a very uh, sort of simple birthday in the backyard and we've had such an incredibly hot summer, hot and dry. We finally had some intense rain this week, which was very welcome. And I'm glad it came down so intensely because the ground really needed it. Um, but it's just been such an incredibly hot summer that there's been uh, just lots of time spent outside, lots of water activities. You'll have seen in the uh, early footage uh, scenes of, uh, of the summer. And I'll be putting on more at the end uh, regarding some of the wonderful things that we've been able to do this summer. And I'll tell you more about that later, as I always do. And uh, I'll also be announcing the winner of the giveaway that uh, we've had since the last podcast, which was for this wonderful yarn by uh, Arctic Crafts, who is Bente in Norway. And this is her uh, Rock Garden colorway. I've since actually bought a skein of it, uh, wound it up, and am knitting on it. So you'll see that a little later. But I'll be announcing the giveaway. And the prompt for this was to tell me about where you live. And I had so much fun reading those. It was so, so wonderful to see where people live and telling me a little bit about where they live. And I actually have, you know, gone on to Google Maps to see like, where is that? And um, looked up some of the historical sites uh, that people told me about. And it was just an absolute pleasure. So thank you so much to those of you who shared where you live and uh, just said hello from where you are. And really, um, there were people from all over the world. Uh, hello to those of you in the United States, in Canada, in the UK, uh, but also all over Europe. We had some from Africa, from Amman and Jordan. Hello. Um, I think somebody from South Africa. And uh, it was just an absolute delight to read about all these places so thank you so much for participating in that that was really great i think that was a good prompt <laughs> and thank you also for the book recommendations because some of you uh, gave some book recommendations and whenever anybody does i go and check it out on audible i'll often put them in my wish list and then eventually um, maybe i'll read them so thank you a lot for those as well before we move into the knitting i just had a question last time um, about <clears throat> excuse me, about my rift sweater that I was wearing last time. I had finished the rift and it was in the uh, Retrosaria Pomar Mungo yarn and it was in this kind of uh, creamy yellowy color and somebody had asked whether I'd made mine longer than in the pattern and I did and I can't I can't tell you what the formula is. I, we all have different body lengths and um, generally uh, right now, especially because crop sweaters are the fashion, I find them often a little too cropped for my liking. Um, and in the past, sweaters were often too long. You know, there was a time where sweaters came quite low onto the thighs 
and sometimes I would shorten those because I found those too long. So I really just gauge it by what I want from that sweater, um, regardless of what they suggest in the pattern. Of course, if the pattern is very strict about, you know, the actual knitting pattern, like the stitches that are on it, excuse my phone. We're just gonna have to let that wait it out. There are three rings that are gonna happen. So anyway, back to the pattern. If, if, um, if there's some sort of, you know, real reason why the pattern has to be a certain length because you have to fit, you know, a deer head into it or something like that in, in either in the stitches or if it's color work, or um, you know, there's a certain kind of waist shaping that might be a little bit limiting. You can always eliminate waist shaping for the most part, um, and I have started to do that. I don't tend to put waist shaping anymore into my sweaters. I don't find that it suits my body shape at this point. Um, so I really just kind of figure out, you know, how long do I want this sweater to be, and and measure it um, and that's happening with a sweater that I am knitting right now that uh, I'll show you a little bit later the pink linen one that I did last time I really didn't even look at how long Melissa had written the pattern for I just decided that I wanted it to be you know kind of looking like this and so I'm going for that and we'll see if I'm right um, but that's easy you could always you know, rip out a sweater or rip out the ribbing and make it longer, make it a little shorter. Ribbing doesn't usually take very long to do. So um, I make decisions that hopefully I can fix after, especially if it's a top-down sweater. It's a lot easier to be able to, uh, to fix any length uh, that you want to change, right? So, so I don't have, you know, I don't say my sweaters are always 12 inches long. Um, I have to say that my sweaters used to be about 15 inches, including the ribbing. Now they tend towards 13. Um, but I know that the rift, for example, I think you, I think the length of the, the body was actually about 10 inches, if I remember correctly. And that was just going to be way too short for me. I think the rift ended up around 12 inches, but I, I can't be sure. I haven't measured it yet. I told you last time about the rift that I was thinking of uh, perhaps giving it away. I'm still thinking of doing that. I just haven't seen my friend. So I'm hoping to show it to her when I do see her and, um, and sort of say, hey, do you want this? <laughs> so I am planning on giving it away. Um, as, and thank you for all the comments. I think it looks great too, but I just have a funny feeling I'm not gonna wear it. I have a lot of sweaters in my, in my closet and so, I, I enjoy the knitting. I really enjoyed making the rift. And so I don't feel like I need to rip it out or try and salvage it in some way. I'm happy to give it to somebody who I hope will wear it and enjoy it. And if not, then, you know, I, I'll see what, I, what I'll do with it. But um, at this point, uh, my thought is to give it away. So what am I wearing today? Because I usually start with that. I am wearing a sweater I made in 2017. This is the Flex by Heidi Kiermeyer, who is a Canadian designer, actually. I believe she lives on the West Coast, and she's got some very interesting designs uh, in her collection and, um, and designs sweaters quite regularly. This was a super mind-blowing knit, if I can call it that. I remember uh, really struggling with the concept and uh, having a little bit of stress as I knit this, but then it all came together and turned into a top that I've really enjoyed wearing and would like to make again. We'll see when that actually happens. Um, I made this out of some yarn that I had in my stash that I had got from a discount bin. It was called Fanny. It was an Aran weight kind of, I think it was mostly silk uh, yarn by I believe Katya. And, uh, but it is completely discontinued. I don't know that you'd be able to find it anywhere at this point. Katya is an interesting uh, yarn company because they really, they, they, they really um, create new yarns and have them in circulation for a while and then they can be gone. They have some, some of their standard yarns, uh, such as their linen, for example, and perhaps some other ones that I don't know of that they have all the time but they create a lot of yarns that are in circulation for a short time and I think that this was one of them. 
So I'll just get up so you can see it. It's just a really, oops, it got a little wrinkled there, a really great top. And Heidi Kiermeyer often has these little details. This was, these holes were there to create a little bit of shaping. Um, and these holes were there to, they created detail, but they were also there, I believe, to uh, create increases. And this was sort of knit in one piece, but not completely. And it was knit from the top down with a little bit of this like weird construction that ended up happening up here. And uh, I just, I really like it. It's a great t-shirt um, type of sweater. And um, I have to say, I haven't worn it a lot this summer uh, because it's been so hot here and we don't have air conditioning that um, I've just been wearing like the lightest things possible as we telework. That was always one of the nice things about going into the office in the summer was being in an air conditioned place. Um, so we, we have been having talks about getting an air conditioner, but we don't have one at this point. We've got a system for keeping the house cool that works very well. But uh, as a result of the extreme heat this summer, I have not even been wearing my nets because for the most part, it's almost too heavy, right? Even though this is a light, fairly cool top. Uh, so anyway, this is what I'm wearing today. Really like this top, even though it's the first time I'm wearing it this year. I've worn it a lot in the past. It's been three years. It's, it's stayed in great condition. And um, I do intend to make another one at some point. I'd really like to make it out of the Quince & Company Kestrel. Um, but somehow I always struggle to find the right color. So hopefully I will one day. So this is what I'm wearing. What have I finished? In order to show you what I finished, I'm going to do a little bit of a wardrobe change. Ta-da! We are back in some deep purple. <laughs> um, so this is what I finished. I was knitting on this last time. I was anxious to get it done and I did. I believe I finished it while we were camping. And this is the Breezeway by Laura Ayler which is a sort of simple tee with a scoop uh, towards the back, which you'll see in a moment. I made this out of some Malabrigo sock yarn in the Abril colorway that I've had in my stash for a very long time. Um, and it was one of those, it's about time I'm knitting you kind of projects. The pattern itself was a gift from a viewer, so thank you very much, and a participant in um, the Garment Galore Cal. However, I'm not happy. I just feel like somehow my mojo is a little bit weird these days. I'll show you. There's just, I don't know. I don't know. I'll show you. I don't even know what to tell you about this. The sweater itself and the construction is lovely. And I've seen actually in our garment galore, Cal, I've seen some lovely versions of this sweater. It's a nice top, but I have a feeling that I could have knit it slightly smaller. And I have a feeling that I don't really love the scoop part on it, which is fixable. So we'll see what happens, but here you go. It also has quite a lot of stuff happening here. There is the front. What I'm, and I, I haven't sewn in my ends yet because I'm undecided about it, but this is rather large for an armhole. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, there's a bit of a wingy thing happening here that I could fix. Um, but what I'm, I'm not into, I don't actually like this scoop thing happening here. Um, I find that it emphasizes my belly. Um, and I'm just, I don't know. I find that all this striping stuff seems to emphasize a lot of what's going on over here. Um, I, I'm not convinced again that this is a top that I want in my life. So I don't know if, if this is my mojo being really weird on me or, uh, you know, and making me see things in a different way and get really picky or, you know, if, if I've knit this and I'm not going to wear it, I don't really, I don't really want to have it. And again, this is something that I could give to somebody and they could rip it out if they liked. But 
With this yarn, I had actually thought about making the Elton cardigan by Hoki Locatelli. And I actually have some mohair upstairs, some purple mohair. Um, and so if I decide that I don't want to keep this, then I think that I will put this, turn this into the Elton cardigan. Um, yeah, I'm just really, I don't know, I'm just, there's something about it that I, I'm just not really convinced I really like. And also, I'm finding this, even though it's a light merino, I'm not sure that I'm going to find the weather to wear it in. I may, but I'm, I'm just feeling quite ambivalent about this. And I feel like, do I really want to be ambivalent about a sweater? I don't know. What ends up happening when you're ambivalent about the sweater is that you don't wear it, right? Just like when you buy something at the store and you kind of convince yourself that you like it, you often don't end up wearing it. Sometimes you're wrong and suddenly it becomes the thing in your wardrobe that you wear all the time. Um, but I certainly wouldn't want this to end up being something that just sat in my closet. So I'm I'm torn and I find that it I find that it's making me look really big around here. Uh, so anyway, this is the breezeway. Um, it was a well written pattern. I like the pattern. I think had I made it uh, in different yarn that didn't have quite as much variegation and had I perhaps stopped these sleeves a little bit sooner so that it was a bit more snug around here I think that I would really like this because if you, it looks great when I tuck that in um, but the way it is now I just find like there's something a little too droopy about it for what I wanted which was a summer tea so I don't know does that make sense that's how I feel about it right now anyway really not convinced so I'm back in this t-shirt and you know this is a top where I just feel like it sits really nicely on the top it make I feel like I you know it 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 flatters my shape, it gives a nice feeling of shoulders, whereas I find the other one creates sort of a droopy feeling. So anyway, uh, I feel like my knitting mojo for sweaters is a little on the wonky side, if one can say that. And there it is for a last time. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. Um, I don't know. Anyway, that's that. That's all I have as far as uh, finished objects goes. Or finished objects go. In terms of works in progress. The last thing oh, that I showed you last time, and I've moved it into a different bag, uh, was the Missoni Accomplished Sweater designed by Melissa of Espace Tricot. It is now being housed in this really fun bag by Sandy by the Lakeside, who makes beautiful bags. And I got this from her, I believe, last year. And it's got a couple of pins. This is a pin that came, is that upside down? That came from Sandy. And this is uh, from Marceline Smith, who is Hay Brown Berry. She makes these sweater, these pins called sweater on board or socks on board that you can put on your knitting projects. So I am still knitting this uh, Missoni accomplished I, or accomplished. I haven't finished it. I haven't accomplished it yet. <laughs> um, I'm in process so far really liking it. I have just changed the needles for the ribbing. Um, so I think it might end up being a little long, but I'm going to go ahead and do the ribbing. And if that's the case, then I'll just re it. I tried it on yesterday. I think this is one that I'm really going to like. I can't even figure out where's the back. Where's the thread? That, oh, there it's right there. So this is the front. Um, I really like the way this sits. And if the length is right, I could see this becoming a really, really wonderful summer sweater. I still haven't decided on the sleeves. I think I'll probably make them three quarter sleeves um, as Melissa had done in her linen version of this sweater because really this is supposed to be 
a, a woolly sweater with a chevron color work on it uh, but she had made using the stitch count she had used the pattern to make a simple linen top which I fell in love with and realized that I had this you know bright pink yarn in my stash that I could make that sweater with so so far I'm really enjoying it right now it's looking it, it'll probably stretch a tiny bit when I when I wet it but I, it looks like it's going to be about the length of this of this flex top and I'm very happy with that so I'm gonna finish it and then we'll see what happens so hopefully next time I podcast uh, this will be finished um, I haven't been knitting as much as I normally would in fact this summer there have actually been short stretches of two or three days where I haven't knit that is the first time that's ever happened to me I have to say uh, I've been sort of questioning like hmm, what's going on one thing for sure is that I've just been really enjoying the summer weather um, it's been so hot I've been wanting to swim now our phone never rings why is it ringing now sorry I think I'll have to uh, go and turn it off anyway um, it's just been it's just been a beautiful beautiful summer and I've just enjoyed doing other things um, and we've been spending more time together playing games or playing badminton in the backyard so uh, I just have been kind of a little bit more um, kind of going with my flow of what I feel like doing. I think on a certain level I felt like I've got to knit, I've got to knit, I've got to finish this sweater and I am feeling less pressure to do that and less of a need to do that and I'm just kind of going with that flow. So, so hence this probably could have been finished by now uh, but it hasn't. Um, it will be for next time and I'm looking forward to wearing this in the late summer uh, probably cooler days and perhaps into September as well I love linen and as I said last time sometimes when you're knitting linen with linen you think oh this looks so sloppy but it tends to even out after once you've washed it I'm on to my third ball of this unknown linen that I had gotten in Uruguay um, so uh, I, I suspect that I'll probably end up just a teeny weeny bit into the fourth ball but there will be a little bit left over that I'm not sure what I'll do with I'll have to see but this has been a pleasure and an easy one to take along with us on you know our trips whatever we've been doing so that's one work in progress the other work in progress is a recent cast on. I mentioned to you earlier that I had bought my own skein of the Arctic Crafts uh, sock that was for the giveaway um, in order to knit it and it arrived and so I took it with us on our trip and ended up having to hand wind it Uh, into this ball. So this is what it looks like. It is a nice neutral gray that has very subtle speckling going on it. It is being housed, I'm going to tell you this project, which is a sock project, in this really nice bag that my friend Sue made for me for my birthday. Um, in fact, we saw each other this week. She dropped by to give me this present, uh, which had some other little goodies in it and um, it's just a really lovely fabric with uh, and it's this bag that has a window in it I just really like it so I've moved this project into here uh, immediately I'm, I did that other things that came in here she made some wonderful masks uh, with this kind of a new interesting pattern I think she said it goes this way it's the new COVID fashion uh, so that's really great. I'm looking forward to having those masks in circulation because here in Ontario we have to wear masks. It's mandatory to wear masks in any public setting. Uh, so any indoor setting or if you are in a setting where you are unable to, um, to keep the six uh, feet distance or two meter distance between you and other people. So it's really great. We all have like a variety of disposable as well as reusable masks that we have with us so at this point the more the merrier 
Um, so what am I making? And, and then there were some other little goodies. Sorry, I'm all over the place. There were some minis in there as well. Uh, these two are from Art by Anna, and this one Sue wasn't quite sure about, and there was some soap, and there was some tea from Norway. Perhaps if you are from Norway, because I know that some people are, there were these teas in there, and clearly this one has my name in it. Selma Sundiges Chocolade. So I'm thinking there's a chocolate tea of some sort. Um, so she gave those to me as well that I'm, I'm looking forward to, to trying as well as also a little bit of soap. So back to the main attraction, which is here that Sue had made for me and which contains this wonderful yarn by, by Bento of Arctic Crafts. I am knitting the Speckled Space Socks by Amanda B. Stevens. I've just started them but I'm absolutely in love with the speckling that is happening on here. Really, really beautiful. I don't know, I hope that focused. Um, such a beautiful pattern. And so this, um, this is now turning into a V here. You, the sock has these sort of V stripe sections with uh, this sort of little uh, wrap thing happening inside the V's and uh, so far I'm really enjoying this yarn it's absolutely wonderful um, so the person who wins this I hope that you'll enjoy it as well and I'll be announcing that a little later but it's essentially a gray with lots of yellows and greens and pops of red uh, like you would see in a rock garden so this is Bentis sock yarn which is a called pole dale it's a Polworth Coriadale mix uh, as well as a little bit of nylon. It's got a really nice feel. It's crisp but soft at the same time. A little bit like a, a BFL if you happen to have knit with BFL before. But anyway, that's been really just a, a starting of a sock um, and I'm really trying to work hard on that sweater but I was really in the mood to, to start these socks so uh, that was really fun to do. And I'll be continuing on those over the next couple of weeks. So this was a year where people made me bags. And I'll show you one in a moment, but Gertie wanted to come and say hello. Because I'm drinking my tea um, out of Gertie, my favorite mug today. Well, I wouldn't say my favorite mug, one of my favorite mugs, but Gertie's got such personality and she'll often come and say hello on the podcast, as you know. And I'm drinking my, my favorite, my standard cardamom uh, tea, black tea by, by Ahmed teas of London. So my dear friend made this bag for me. She's not a knitter but she has been sewing a lot and really got her sewing mojo going during this COVID time and has done some really interesting uh, different types of stitching things. So she made this Japanese knot bag for me which is which has a square bottom and there is some beautiful fraying happening there. There's a pocket here on the outside and there's this lovely stitching with some beads on it. It's just such a beautiful bag. I, I just absolutely love it. Um, she also gave me this die kit. It's a natural die kit that um, it's called the love of color. I know that she got it on Etsy and I believe there are five dyes in here, uh, uh, natural dyes such as logwood with instructions and some citric acid um, and so I'm really looking forward to, to, to trying these at some point and um, I haven't yet but um, I'm thinking that, I, and I know I have some undyed yarn in my yarn closet that I just have to find, but this was, she just gave a really thoughtful gift. It was absolutely wonderful. So in here is actually something that was sent to me um, as, as part of the Knit Local Getaway. 
at the end of April, I was supposed to go to a retreat in the States. It was a retreat that I went to last year as well. And um, we would have gotten, you know, sort of a, a gift package at the retreat. And so she sent them out this year. And uh, it was an embroidery kit, actually. Um, and it came in this pouch, which I haven't ended up using, although this would be what you would normally use for embroidery. It ended up being in here. But um, uh, it came in here as well as some other little goodies like this beautiful pouch that I haven't actually started using yet, uh, but I really do need to. And um, another wonderful mini from uh, Birch Hollow Fibers. This beautiful, beautiful yellow. I just love yellow. Mm, such a pretty color. And, uh, and a couple of other little goodies. But in there was this wonderful, wonderful embroidery kit put together by Battenkill Fibers, who I bought yarn from last year when I was at the retreat. And they sent these really, let me see if I can show them all to you, really delightful colors. Just so pretty. Of this sort of uh, two-ply, kind of very nice rustic yarn. And with that came instructions for a, uh, an embroidery, as well as the cloth with the image of the embroidery on it. That is, uh, then the, the image washes out and I started this embroidery. Now, this is the first time I've ever done embroidery. Um, and so far, I've only employed two stitches. This is a French knot, which took me forever to learn, I have to say. I just kept doing it and the yarn would not knot. <laughs> and then I finally watched a YouTube video, which taught me, as well as this other, I'm not quite sure what it's called. Is it a braid stitch or something like that? Um, so this is what I've done so far. Um, the hoop was I, was a hoop that I just happened to have, which is great. Um, and I'll take it out of the hoop so that you can see the entire entire image of what it's going to be like. So I've been sort of slowly working away on this, just really enjoying it. And, uh, and so... Um, I'll continue to work on it and I'm actually using the kind of a beige yarn to go around uh, the center of this flower at this point and I'll probably do the center of the flower with it as well. That's my thinking anyway. And I haven't made decisions about the other colors. I'm kind of doing this as I go along. So we'll see what uh, what ends up coming out of it. But I've it's been such a pleasure to work on this. I have to say, I think that the fact that you're embroidering with wool, which is a little bit uneven and forgiving, um, has been a great way to start with uh, embroidery, rather than using a really fine thread and, and something where you have to be very precise. This has been sort of a whimsical project and uh, sort of you know, it's got the guidelines, but you can do whatever you want, and so there's no pressure. And I'm just so happy to finally do some embroidery, because there's been a lot of embroidery done by the women in my family, especially of my mother's generation, my grandmother's generation. But it's something that I've never really learned to do. I've done some cross-stitch, um, but I don't really enjoy cross-stitch. I find it, I find this actually kind of more creative and fun. Um, and cross-stitch, you're really essentially doing one stitch over and over again uh, so this has just been this has been really fun and, and whimsical to work on and uh, I just love the bag that it's in so much that it's been wonderful there's a little bottle of something in here it's been wonderful to to carry around in this bag that my friend made me so this is the episode of the homemade bags Sue, my friend who gave me the, the gray uh, and white bag, she used to have a shop, but she doesn't anymore now. She's really just making things for others. So thank you very much, Sue, for that bag. I really love it. So I think 
I feel like I've kind of gone a little bit all over the place, <laughs> but hopefully you're still there with me. And uh, I think that comes to the end of my works in progress. And so once I finish the Missoni Accomplished, I'll continue working on the socks as well as the embroidery, but I will be casting on the rift again in the green that I showed you last time, uh, the sweater that I'll be ripping out and turning into a rift. So I will probably be bringing that with me uh, when we go to a cottage next week, because hopefully I'll be finishing the Missoni Accomplished then. So, I was going to show you my acquisitions, but I've kind of shown you my acquisitions already. Um, the only thing that I haven't shown you really uh, is this yarn that I got at Wabi Sabi, which is my local yarn shop. And they have this yarn that is a 100% Canadian yarn. And I was so taken by the color that I decided that I had to get it and the person in the shop was actually making a pair of socks out of it and I was like that is so beautiful. So this is a yarn that is 70% wool and 30% pure wool and it's 100% Canadian wool from our, it's by Custom Woolen Mills and they are a um, prairie woolen mill in Western Canada that has been producing wool since 1868. So I bought this and this. They're both absolutely beautiful colors. My intention is to knit a pair of socks out of this one and I'm keeping this one as a giveaway for the podcast and it's such a beautiful blue. Um, and I had thought I'd make two pairs, but then I thought, no, I think this needs to go to somebody who watches the podcast at some point. So um, I'm probably not gonna be buying a whole lot of yarn for the rest of the year. I'm just feeling like I've got enough. And uh, we were, you know, I've been around yarn shops, but I mean, don't completely hold that to me because let's, let's face it, I'm a yarn addict. But right now that's how I'm feeling anyway and uh, I haven't even really been looking at yarn but it was nice to get some of these sock yarns which are a little bit different and um, and work on those. So that's it for the acquisitions. So the giveaway. So I just wanted to announce the winner of the giveaway. There is the back of the sock. It's look at that that gorgeous red and cream and green spot right there. So the winner of the sock yarn uh, is, drum roll, um, it was post number 415. We had 445 entries into the, um, the comments thread. And as I said, so many wonderful, wonderful entries. So thank you so much for participating. And uh, the winner is somebody who comes from the UK. Uh, she said she lives outside of London, but one is actually born in Portugal. And this person is called Vasco Crafts. So Vasco Crafts, congratulations. And uh, please get in touch with me, uh, probably on Ravelry or on Instagram. And uh, you can send me a direct message. Let me know it's you and uh, send me your address. And I will happily put this thin package into the mail for you. <laughs> so there you go. Congratulations. Thank you to everybody for participating. It was really awesome. So we have meandered through the knitting content of the podcast, through the knitting confessions of the podcast, and that is really the end of the, the knitting portion. So I thought I would just tell you a little bit about some of the media, the reading, the things that I've been watching or listening to, and uh, tell you a little bit about what has been going on in the month of July and uh, early August. So uh, feel free to stick around if you want to hear about that. And if not, we'll see you next time. So last time when I told you about the books that I had read, I was, I thought, gee, that just doesn't seem like many books. And I realized I'd completely forgotten about one book. 
which tells you something. Um, I have to say the book was a little bit forgettable for me. And that was a book called Mr. Nobody by Catherine Stedman. Now I had read, this was her second novel. I had read her first novel, which was called Something in the Water uh, last year, I think, or perhaps at the end of the previous year um, that I had quite enjoyed actually. Um, but this one uh, I enjoyed less, I have to say. Um, I don't know if you've read it, if you enjoyed it, but I, I was, the story was going along and it was great, but when it actually culminated, I didn't like the direction that she took it in. I think I just, I was like, this doesn't make sense to me. Um, I wish it had gone some more in another direction. I thought it would have been more interesting. So anyway, I didn't, I didn't love it. Uh, she writes well, uh, she's a newish author. Um, so we'll see where she goes, but uh, I'd forgotten to tell you guys about that. Uh, I was just finishing Tennessee He Coats uh, Between the World and Me and I told you about it last time. I highly recommend that book. If, if you are especially wanting to read something by an author about, um, about being a, a, a black individual in the United States growing up with a little bit of history thrown in and the challenges that a black male has to deal with in the States. Um, it's, it's, it's a great book for that. It's incredibly well written, like really beautifully well written, um, or beautifully written, I should say. Just, you know, like just that kind of writing where you're in awe at, at moments of how they've said things. Um, a little reminiscent of Maya Angelou, in a way, in the sense that things are just said quite straightforwardly. Uh, but masterfully. So anyway, highly recommend it. It was a beautiful book. It was a sad book, of course, um, but I think really important. And uh, if you are wanting to to read up or learn in that area and, you know, support uh, the Black Lives Matter, I think I, I highly recommend that book. I also started the book Deacon King Kong, uh, which I told you I was going to be reading last time. Unfortunately, I started listening to the book and um, I had borrowed it from the library and I, I didn't get through the book. And then the library took it back on me. <laughs> so I'm, I've re-requested it and I'm waiting for it. And when I get it, I'll finish it. Why didn't I get through it in those three weeks is kind of a bit of a mystery. And But I think there are two things. Um, it was so crazy hot here that I wasn't going out for walks. And normally I listen to my books when I go out for a walk. But it was, it was just, it was so like unforgivingly hot that I just wasn't going out. So I didn't get through it as quickly. I have to say I was not loving it. Like it was very entertaining in some ways. Um, it was light, uh, you know, they were, the characters were quite rich and funny, but I just kept wondering, and there were a lot of characters and I was getting a little lost as to, okay, like which one is this and who's this and where are we going with this um, at times. However, I wasn't able to get to the end of the book, so I can't really have much of an opinion about it. And uh, I have to wait like 16 weeks. <laughs> so I'm glad that people are wanting to read the book, but uh, I'll be waiting for a little while before I can finish the book. And when I do, then I'll have a real opinion about it but certainly well written and definitely very entertaining. And this was part of the book club by Shelby and the book club on Instagram. And uh, I know another friend of mine was reading it and we sort of had the same opinion like that. It was very entertaining, but we didn't know where it was going and there were a lot of characters, but uh, it was definitely very, uh, quite a, quite a whimsical, um, funny story about living in the projects in, I can't remember where they were exactly in the States, but it was, uh, you know, very well written and fun. But I have no idea where it was going. Like, I couldn't tell you. Um, and the other thing about that book that was actually quite neat was that the reader, because I'm listening to it on Audible, was the same reader whose name was Dominic Hoffman, who read uh, the book Homegoing, that was one of my favorite books from last year 
by Ya Jiezi, who is a Ghanaian American writer and had written uh, a fabulous book um, that recounted the story of two sisters, one who's remained in Africa in the 1700s and the other one who became a slave and their, their lineages and how, how those progressed. It was a, one of, uh, definitely in my top books from the last year and the reader for Deacon King Kong was the same reader. So it was really strange at first going, I, I, I feel like the story should be going somewhere else because of this reader. But uh, really good reader and really enjoyed his voice and his style very much. And um, after that, I listened to two books by Dervla McTiernan, who is an Irish writer um, whose work I've really enjoyed. She writes uh, sort of police crime novels. And uh, she had a short story called The Roommate. And I just finished The Good Turn which is her latest novel. And I have to say of her three novels, that was the one that I probably liked the least, but um, I still really enjoy her writing. Her, her style is very easy to listen to. Um, and uh, you know, her stories are pretty good and her characters are pretty good. So I really, uh, I've enjoyed her writing. And that's essentially the books that I've read. In the last month, I haven't really watched a whole lot. I watched 13th, which is on Netflix and uh, is a documentary about the 13th Amendment in the United States. Um, a very, very well done documentary. Uh, I have to say, difficult to watch and it was, it was uh, anger inducing. Uh, I was pretty grumpy after that and I realized that it really had an impact on me and made me angry, but I think that's important. But the music was also really good in that document. It was a very well put together documentary about the 13th Amendment in the States. It came out I think in 2016 and is now on Netflix. I also listened to a podcast called White Lies, which was a seven part podcast about um, 1965 in Selma, Alabama and uh, sort of an unsolved murder of Jim Reeb, who was a uh, white Unitarian minister who went from Boston to Selma, Alabama to work with uh, the black community in getting voting rights, and he was killed. And uh, so it's all about that. It's a very well put together podcast as well. Um, really good journalism, fabulous music as well in it. My iTunes library has <laughs> has been adding, getting new music because of these uh, of these great documentaries, and uh, so that's sort of like documentary journalism. I'm not quite sure what uh, what style you'd call it, but really enjoyed that. It was very good. Um, I think that was put together in 2018, and they called it season one. I don't know if there's ever going to be a season two but I'm sure there are lots of great stories to tell, so I hope that the two journalists do continue their work. This is an NPR podcast, um, so it was part of the, uh, uh, the National Radio of the United States. And so that's really all the media that I've been into. Last time I podcasted, I told you that we had pretty much decided that we were going to go to British Columbia as we had already planned and had bought our tickets in January. Well, we hadn't actually bought our tickets. These tickets were free tickets that we've had for a couple of years because of aeroplan points. And so we could go anywhere in Canada for free and we had decided to go to British Columbia. Last year, we just weren't able to get ourselves organized and so we said, well, we'll do it this year. And our, our flights were set for to leave July 25th. And the last time I podcasted, we had pretty much decided that we were going to go. Um, but then it was actually a viewer, and I thank you, who said, you know, you might want to check. I'm not sure BC is as open as you think it might be. There's still, you know, a lot of restrictions. So we decided to check. And even though Victoria, we were going to go to, to the island, um, Vancouver, no, what is it called? Anyway, to the island where Victoria is um, and go up along the coast to Tofino 
Um, in Victoria, things were quite open, uh, following social distancing norms and so forth, but a lot of the natural things that we wanted to enjoy were actually closed, such as the hot springs that were there, not all the hikes were open, some of the beaches were not open, and so we just decided, you know, it's, it's an investment to uh, get on a plane at this point and cross the country, and we just decided we weren't ready to do that, um, we'll wait. But we did want to do something and so we decided to keep our traveling more local and uh, in the province where we have very clear guidelines and so we ended up um, taking a trip, a road trip with the kids uh, through Toronto to um, Niagara Falls and, and then from Niagara Falls we went down a little bit further south to Lake Erie and spent a couple of days on the beach there. And uh, we had a wonderful trip. It was just really great. Um, spending, uh, we just spent a day in Toronto um, and then we spent uh, three nights in the Niagara region. Went on the typical uh, boat trip down in Niagara Falls and uh, we didn't partake in some of the typical sort of um, fairground attraction things in Niagara Falls. Uh, the kids weren't interested and we also just wanted to keep things as simple as possible in terms of, you know, being safe. Um, but we were able to have a really grand trip, uh, despite, you know, like keeping in line with the COVID restrictions and being careful. Um, and I found that overall, everybody was very respectful of um, the COVID restrictions and really adhered to them and uh, the beaches were great people kept their distances and i never there was only one time i have to say in niagara falls on the boardwalk where uh, people were walking a little bit well first of all people weren't wearing masks and it was a little, not terribly congested but there were quite a few people but otherwise you know on the boat in niagara falls uh, we all had to wear masks even though we were outside. We were of course in these plastic capes that protect you from the wetness of the falls um, and also they had limited capacity on the boat so you know you were never close to people and it was really fun and the falls I'm so glad to have finally seen them and I probably wouldn't have if this uh, COVID thing hadn't been happening um, and I'm really glad because I'd never seen the falls considering that I live in Ontario and they're not as far as I thought they were. The trip from here to Niagara Falls is less than seven hours, about seven hours but a little bit less so it's not that crazy and I had never been to Lake Erie and it was just, we went to this place called Long Point which is a little peninsula off of the province into the lake which is a, there's a wildlife conserv conservancy uh, happening there and it's just, the beaches were beautiful, there were sand dunes and it was just absolutely beautiful. It was almost like being in the sea, the, there were waves and we were jumping through them and uh, it was just really, really great. Um, so it was a really lovely trip, I'm glad we did it and um, you know, we get tested every couple of weeks as I've mentioned before, in order to see my mom. So, you know, we've been tested and have uh, come up negative. So I feel like, you know, we were able to do that and continue to be safe, uh, which is a really important thing to do at this point. But it's also, I think, uh, in order to be able to maintain sanity, important to be able to get out and do something. So that's what we were comfortable with and, and we did it and um, we had a great time. Uh, we've also spent time, a little bit of time camping, which was really great. And there's just been so much uh, wonderful weather to be able to be outside. And because it's been so dry, the bugs have been um, kind of under control, which has been great because some summers you just, it becomes difficult to be outside because it's so buggy, but it hasn't been. And uh, we've been able to enjoy the backyard and playing badminton as I've mentioned before and lots of swimming so it's been a very very wonderful summer and I have to say usually if we have a really good summer by September I am really waiting for the fall colors and the uh, 
cooler weather cooking to happen. So uh, I think that um, it'll be, I'll be ready for the fall after this really wonderfully hot summer. So that's essentially what I've been up to around here. Um, and so anyway, I think that kind of brings me to the end of the podcast. <laughs> I hope that this podcast has found you well. And um, if you're still here, thank you for joining me. And so I'll be leaving you with some images from our trip. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, friends. to see you, I suppose, and they're a gleamy. You must be dreamy. And the sun has said goodbye with a twinkle in his eye. He's left the ocean with sweet emotion. Sleepy side of town And he's so lonely I love you only I love you Sleepy side of town And he's so lonely